Hello everyone, welcome to our Monday flow. If you're listening to this on a recording or live, this is going to be all about more yin, which is holding postures for long and restorative style. I love to start my week in a way that I can ease in as well as feel connected to my body. So today we're going to have our yoga sequence be much more focused on the floor or the seated part of yoga. So a well-rounded yoga class, if you go to the traditional yoga, you're going to find the beginning, the centering. This is where we have been here playing with essential oils, taking some deep breaths, setting your intention. The next movement into yoga is the, in most cultures it's called pratapana, which is the warm-up part of yoga. It's figuring out what body showed up on your mat today, where you're at. After that pratapana, that warm-up, you move into the standing sequences of yoga, which is the active aspect of it. And then moving into the seated sequences. Generally, before you go from standing to seated, there is a balancing part of the practice. So you're finding your way and balancing into the earth and then moving into the seated sequence. And after we generally end in yoga with a closing, a relaxation, which is the Shavasana, and then into the breathing and coming back out of the practice. So we're gonna do more of a yin or restorative style yoga today to help you to ease your way in, connected to your body for the beginning of the week. I'm gonna recommend that the one prop you're really gonna need today is a blanket or you can have a pillow handy. It'll be really beneficial for our final sequence that we're going to do. As well as, as I always say, you can have some books or some yoga blocks handy in case you need them. And then I always have my scarf here or you can use a yoga strap to have. As always, I like to use aromatherapy to enhance and this is a yoga kit I use from doTERRA. But I'm just gonna explain what oils are in it and that's how you can use whatever oils you might have at home for the different parts of your practice. So I've been starting every practice with this Align Blend. The Align Blend has some citrus in it, as well as it has some mints and florals in it. It is a well-rounded oil. Great ways to help your body and your mind come together, I find, is really blending citruses and mints together. It can align you, focus, and clear in. The Align Blend just soften it, softens it a little with the florals to help it bring into a little more of a well-rounded oil. At the end, when we're preparing for Shavasana, we wanna relax, and so this Anchor Blend is a relaxation style oil. This is gonna have florals and earthy, woody oils in it. Florals and earthy, woody oils send that message, boop, immediately to your brain when you smell them that it's time to chill out and relax. And then as we come out in closing, this is the Arise Blend I've been using, which is almost predominantly citrus oils. Citrus is amazing to help yourself feel on a mood level stable, steady, and confident, and then on an energy level awakening and opening. I find citruses really help me with my mood. It uplifts my mood and it makes me feel grounded and calm. So again, some oils to really help whenever you're blending them with your yoga practice. This sequence is gonna be for anybody and any body today. So it's a really great sequence for you to share with anyone. This can be done whether you have injuries or not. And I'm always here if you have questions about injuries or specific things going on with your body, you know, comment, you can private message me if you need to, to make sure that the sequence supports your well-being. So we're gonna begin as always in an easy seated pose. Now for you, cross-legged might not feel good. Maybe you wanna sit in a chair. Maybe you wanna sit with one leg out. I want you in your seated posture, which this is called Sukhasana, which is easy seated pose. Sukhasana tends to be cross-legged, but some people it's not. Sukhasana is really what feels good for you and your body. And I'm gonna bring the Align Blend in. I'm taking a nice deep breath in. And I love to pull the ears down. This gets some acupuncture points activated for calming. Inhale. And pulling down. 
One more. Pulling down. And now allowing the hands to rest down. We're gonna have them rest face down right now. This will help you ground your energy. When your palms face down, it just helps you connect to groundedness. Relaxing the face, the jaw. Allowing yourself to feel like you're rocking right in that midline of your sits bones. Spine feels tall. And now beginning to just breathe in and out through your nose. Begin to just start this breath easily. Finding the gentle inflow, breathing in through the nose, outflow, breathing out through the nose. You'll begin as you breathe to feel the breath flowing deep within the belly, diaphragmatic breath. And as you breathe in, you want to really feel the belly expand like you're filling a balloon with air. And as you breathe out, imagine that balloon deflating the navel to spine. Just beginning to find this flow in. Finding this flow out, starting to connect to your breath cycle. Breathing in and breathing out. And for the time being, as we're doing this centering, as well as in our standing sequences, we're gonna to wanna to keep the inhale and the exhale the same count. So whether that's a three count, in, two, three, and then exhale, two, three, or a five count, whatever your breath capacity is, we're gonna focus on that. And as we eventually, in just a couple moments, we'll find our way seated, we're gonna to wanna to double our out breath. This is a wonderful tip on breathing to help you wind down, to help you sleep, to just connect to that surrender. But as of now, the in and the out are the same count. I'll cue you as we find our way down to the floor, find our way into the double out breath. So now just bringing the hands together at heart center, thumbs rest against sternum, setting an intention for your yoga practice today. Could be a single word that helps you stay present or focus on how you would like to feel after you're complete so that you can take that feeling off of this experience into the rest of your day. We're going to seal all of our intentions together with a full deep breath, so nice inhale. And then exhale, head moves towards hands, allowing the mind and the heart to honor and acknowledge this intention. Chin to chest, hands to thighs. Just begin, as always, those gentle neck rolls. As you go all the way up, back of the neck is long here. If full neck rolls don't feel good for your neck, remember, you just roll ear to shoulder, you come down and ear to shoulder. So find whatever supports your body here. You're on the full neck rolls. Next time chins to chest, you just reverse direction. Remember, keep the back of that neck long. And then next time, chins to chest, pause here. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, shoulders back and down. Stack head on shoulders, open eyes. Changing the cross of your legs if they are crossed. All right, we're gonna take three sun breaths. So inhale, scoop up. Exhale, through the mind, into your heart, your intention. Inhale, scoop. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, gentle side stretch to the left. 
Blotch that bottom shoulder, relax it. Nice deep breaths here, sits bones rooted. Again, we're in the Pratapana now, that warm up part of a yoga class. Just breathing in, see what body showed up today. And then inhale, reach up. Exhale to the other side, nice deep breaths in. Again, focus on that flow of your breath in and out. Inhale, reach up and relax it down. Inhale, arms rise, long spine. Exhale, twist to the right. Now with this twist, you're gonna just stay long in the twist. Nice deep breaths in and out. In whatever direction, if you twisted to the left, it's okay. Just breathe in with a twist. We're gonna move to the other side momentarily. And then unravel, inhale, reach up, exhale, twist to the other side. Nice deep breath, stay tall in your twists. And then slowly unravel. Now we're gonna find our way to table position, move through some cat cows. We're gonna do a nice, well-rounded, but basic standing sequence. This pose is more yin style, restorative, so we're gonna be in a longer seated sequence today. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, and on an inhale, tailbone shines up, belly to mat, gaze up. Exhale, tuck the tail, squeeze the navel, and really gaze in, squeeze that core and stretch your back. Inhale, flow through, articulating your spine, and exhale, inhale, and exhale. And now inhale, one more, and exhale, one more. Coming on back to table pose. Step your hands about one to two hands forward, and then begin to move your hips up and back down dog. Wrist creases are parallel. Feet are at least hop, sick, hip, so, hip socket width apart. The tongue tweezer teaser today. <laughs> Walking your dog, bending one leg and then the other. That's called hashtag yoga teacher bloopers, tongue twister bloopers. <laughs> All right, just feeling as you're walking your dog, keep the breath stable. Look at your upper thighs if you can to keep your neck relaxed. And then into stillness, take a nice deep breath in. <sighs> nice deep breath out. And then slowly bend the knees, walk the feet to meet the hands. Inhale from here, straight spine, gaze forward. Exhale, fold. Spread the toes, begin to round up one vertebra at a time, really stacking your head as the last thing. Shoulders roll up, back and down, mountain pose. Inhale, arms rise, exhale, heart center, your intention. Inhale, arms rise, you're gonna clasp your right wrist with your left hand, stretch it on over, and then rise and reverse. Inhale, rise, exhale, folding forward. Inhale, straight spine, gaze forward. Exhale, fold, bend the knees, plant the hands, down dog. We're gonna do three basic sun salutes, great way to warm up the body. So nice deep breath in, <sighs> deep breath out. Little bend in the knees, walk the feet back. Inhale, straight spine, exhale, fold. Again, round up. If you want to reach, if that's more in your practice, you can honor that. Exhale down. Inhale, rise. Clasp the wrists. Exhale, side stretch. Inhale, rise. Reverse the clasp. Side stretch. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, straight spine. Exhale, fold. And step back, down dog. Take a nice deep breath in. And let it go. Walk the feet to meet the hands, forward fold. Inhale, straight spine. Exhale, fold. 
Then you can reach up if you're more advanced or follow me for today, rounding up. Stacking up, mountain pose. Inhale, rise. Exhale, heart center. Inhale, rise, clasp your wrists. Exhale, side stretch. Inhale, rise, reverse your clasp. Exhale, side stretch. Inhale, rise, exhale, folding forward. Inhale, straight spine. Exhale, fold, bend the knees, plant the hands, down dog. Nice deep breath in. And nice deep breath out. From here, you're gonna lower the knees. We're gonna come to knee plank. So you're untucking your toes, shoulders are over wrists. You're gonna take a nice deep breath in and as slow as you can, I want you to lower, lower, lower. Use your strength, use your core, lower, lower, lower. And then we're gonna come on up into Sphinx pose. So elbows are right underneath shoulders. From here, you're gonna feel your pelvis. You can even just rock a little, even bending your knees, you can rock. Just feel the low back release here. Feel that pelvis, try and find its way a little more into the floor. And then coming on down to center, pelvic bone rooted down. Now you wanna feel the pelvic bone rooted down, you wanna feel length in your low back, so you're reaching with your low back, inhaling. It's a scoop you feel. You're getting long, the toes reach. You can even grip your hands a little to pull you forward. You can look from side to side to make sure it's not in your neck if you want. Continue that same inhale and exhale count. And then from here, hands are nice and active still, head comes back to center. And we're going to find our way into a downward dog again. So you're gonna lower, press yourself back, downward facing dog. Nice deep breath in. And nice deep breath out. Now walking the feet to meet the hands, forward fold. Now from here, we're gonna do a standing split. We're gonna open up our legs a little and then we're gonna find our way down to the floor. This is a little bit of a balance. This is where you might need some height with blocks at a different height. You have different options here. You also might need them on both hands here. We're gonna keep our left foot rooted and our right foot comes out. Now just lift to wherever supports your body. So standing split, I find, gives you a better stretch if you keep the hips parallel. But if you wanna open up standing split and point your toe and reach, that feels good today, honor it, or keep your hips parallel and then try and get the stretch. Head and neck is relaxed, activate your core, left big toe pushes down. Nice deep breath in. Nice deep breath out. Inhale. And then exhale, you're gonna gently bend the knee, step this foot back, and you're gonna lower now into your back knee. You could slide your props right with you. We're in a low lunge now. You can come on up a little higher. If your props need to come higher, that's fine. Nice deep breaths here into our right hip flexors. Now this might be where you stay. I'm gonna show us a few options here. If you wanna bring a little more of this into a balancing pose, you actually bring your hands to your thigh. This might be where you stay and find a focal point. Or you can bring shoulders over hips, hook the thumbs and rise. Wherever you're at, deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, exhale, two more. Exhale, last one. And exhale, we're all gonna plant ourselves down. And now from here, you're gonna tuck the back toes and you're gonna step your way back to a forward fold. <sighs> now grab the arm, opposite elbows, and just shake it out, ragdoll for a second. Move into the other side now. So you can have your hands to those props if that felt good, root the right foot, left leg lifts. Again, you can open that standing split, that feels good today. Keep the hips square, head and neck relaxed, use your you have a gentle activation of your core here, right? Big toe pushes down. This is a little bit of a balancing pose. Obviously, the more active, advanced standing split, which I'm not necessarily teaching today because we're in the more of that restorative mindset, is grabbing your leg, which can be a really fun, exciting journey. But remember, you can always advance or lower, really lower and create more of a restorative practice to any of these sequences. It's listening to your body. 
Now we want to activate our core, a little bend in that front knee to let that back leg step back. We come on down, low lunge. Again, we want to have an integrity with our spine, nice deep breaths here. Now if you notice in low lunge, my knee's not going past my ankle. I want to keep those joints protected. You can stay here if this feels good, or you can push up, and then you can always hook. All right, we're going to take five breaths wherever you're at. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You want to hug these ribs in, root that foot. Inhale, exhale, breath in, breath out. One more. And then exhale, lower. Bring those back toes tucked to rise up. And then from here, step forward, forward fold. You can set your props to your side now. And again, grab opposite and just rag down for a second. And then bringing your hands to the mat, you're gonna push yourself back as you lower the knees. And come into a child's pose. Just for a couple moments, rest in child's pose. We're gonna begin the remainder of the practice seated. So you can roll to either hip. You're gonna find your way to a seated pose. We're gonna do just traditional forward folding to support your back of your legs and your hamstrings. And then we're gonna transition into pigeon pose today. Give our hips a nice stretch. So for traditional, sit bones rooted, bring your right foot in. I'm showing you side view so you can keep an eye on my spine. So I'm not going to be hunching or anything, as much as I can. We want to have an integrity of spine. So for those of you that are more advanced, you can reach out, up, and over. For those of you that need a little help, bring that prop on the ball of your foot. Nice deep breath in. Exhale, hinge only from your hips. Inhale and exhale. Now, walk. now we're going to bring in that extended exhalation. So if you're breathing in for three, I'm going to do it with that one. If you have a larger capacity, you just double your exhale. So here we go. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Again, you inhale for the count of three. And then you exhale for the count of six. Release the breath. Now your own pace, finding your breath. Wherever you're at, one more of your round. And then you're gonna release this. Now we're gonna do a pigeon pose a really fun way. If you have knee issues, stay where you're at and I'm gonna show you in a moment how to do a modification of pigeon. Everybody else, I'm gonna have you get your blanket if you have one and have it handy in case your hips need it. All we're gonna do is this left leg, we're just gonna spin it around to the back. Now once we do, you usually have to support your body. This leg has to be coming right out of the hip socket. If your toes are sickling, tuck your toes under. Now if you're feeling wobbly, this is where this blanket will come in handy. We want our hips like headlights of a car. We also don't want this at a 90 degree angle can really affect your knee. So finding your way, make sure headlights of a car. Now you might stay here. You might be able to lower all the way or a great option, get those props, get a little height, rest your forehead. So find your way into pigeon, however it supports you. For the rest of us, I'm gonna show you that modification if you have knee issues. So we wanna stretch our right hip. That's what everybody else is doing, right? Modified version is you'll be on your back, your right ankle is on top of your left thigh in a figure four, and then you're hugging in. If you notice, your leg is almost in the same shape as pigeon, but it's getting the stretch in a different way that's not putting pressure on your knee. So if you are in this modified version, I'm just going to encourage you to stay here and breathe here until I come on back and cue you to change sides. Changing sides is very easy. Just lower down and change sides. Everybody else that is in the pigeon pose, we're going to have you take two more of your rounds. Remember doubling your exhalation. So inhaling, and remember to double the exhalation. Finding your breath. And whenever you've completed that second double of exhalation, 
you're gonna come on back up. Everybody laying on your backs, stay there. Us pigeon peeps, extend that leg back out, both legs come out, and reroute. Awesome. So now we're gonna bring the left leg in, and then from here, activate your core, and you're gonna inhale, reach up and over, or grab your prop. Now don't worry everybody that is down below, I'm gonna have you make sure you stretch this leg too. So breathing in and exhale, hinging. Remember everybody on your back, stay there. Now everybody here, take these deep breaths and remember doubling your exhale now. So finding that exhale doubled. Feeling the breath. Remembering only hinging from hip, trying not to reach around. All right, those on your back, make sure you've switched your sides. Don't forget to switch your sides. And you're gonna take some deep breaths in. So those on back, switch sides. Hugging that other hip in, if you have not already. And then everybody else, we're swinging that right leg around. Now we gotta find pigeon pose right on this side. So sometimes one hip is different than the other. It's great to work your pose from the foundation of it up. So headlights of a car, that might mean you need a little prop under your tush, coming right out of hip socket. It also might mean you need to tuck your back toes under and then lower. That might mean you need your props to gain a little height. And you're just gonna breathe here, taking some nice deep breaths. Finding those breaths in and finding those breaths out. Really finding your way to surrender. Deep breaths in and remember doubling your exhalation. Staying there for those in pigeon. For the rest of you that are laying on your backs, I'm gonna to begin to just guide you through how your sequence is gonna complete here. Pigeon people, staying there. So the rest of you here should have had your, hugging your left hip in, right? So you're stretching your left hip. You're gonna take two more cycles of this. So whatever that is for you, two more cycles of it. Nice deep breaths in, nice deep breaths out. Remembering you're doubling the exhalation. Once you are completed with that, you unravel. And now I don't want you to jut your neck up to stress it, so I want you to roll to your side. Use the floor as your friend. Push up, and your head and neck stay relaxed. And you're gonna come to a seated position, left, or no, yeah, right leg. Is it our right leg? I remember whatever leg in, yeah, as our left leg comes in, now we're gonna stretch. We wanna stretch the other side of our body, yes, yeah, so our left leg in. And you're doubling your exhalations. Remember the prop is available to you to keep your spine in integrity. Nice deep breaths. Wherever you're at, whether you're in the pigeon or you're up now stretching that leg, the exhalation has doubled. Just listening to the body and breath coming together as one. All right, those that are stretching that hamstring, just stay there. Those of you in pigeon, you're gonna rise up, you set any props you have aside and you swing your way forward. Everybody now is both legs out. So bringing both legs out and staff reroute we're going over both legs, so more advanced, you can use your arms. If you really like the prop, I encourage you. Nice deep breath in, and exhale. Remember, doubling your exhalation. So finding whatever breath capacity serves you with the exhalation doubled. And then wherever you're at, after your exhale is complete, you're gonna come on up. From here, we're gonna wanna make sure that we have our props handy. 
because we're going to begin to find our way down. So I'm going to have you bring your feet flat on the mat, grab behind your thighs and lower all the way down. You're going to start to rock a little from side to side. Just give that back a little massage. And then eventually you're going to allow the knees to fall to the right. Your arms are going to open up into a T. Now you can just keep a T position. If you want a deeper side stretch, I encourage you to reach that left arm up. It'll stretch your side of your body. You can also rest your right hand on top of your left thigh. That can sometimes encourage all of this to release. We're taking some nice deep breaths wherever you're at. I encourage you to look wherever supports your neck. Remembering the exhalation is still doubled. You can close the eyes if you want to move inward. And then coming on up and then just switch sides. So you might just be in traditional twist, which is great. If you want to enhance it and you have the capability, reach that right arm. You can rest left on your thigh in deep breaths. Exhale is doubled. And then coming on back up, resting all the way onto your back. We're going to come to happy baby for a moment. So soles of the feet face the ceiling. You're going to grab behind your knees right here on your thighs. If you have the capabilities, you grab the outside of your feet. Now you want to pull the knees closer to your armpits. Happy baby. You're getting a nice deep stretch in your inner thighs. You can stay here or rock your baby. Remembering breath in and then doubling the exhale. Finding your breath. Two more rounds of whatever your breath capacity is. I would encourage you for the last two rounds, come back to stillness. Feel the back surrender and the hips. And then wherever you're at, once your exhale is complete, you're going to lower the feet. Now I'm going to be showing you two different options to do your quote unquote Shavasana relaxation pose. Option number one is doing supine Baddha Konasana, which is face up butterfly position with your rolled up blanket. Now if you want to do this even more intensely, it feels awesome to do it with a nice long king size pillow, which is great, but it's right up to my sacrum. Soles of the feet are together and I'm resting down. Now you might need a prop under your head. You don't want to feel like your head and neck is straining at all. So you want to make sure the head and neck feel comfortable. If this is too much for your hips, then you have those blocks or books and you just kind of nuzzle them right underneath your tush so that it supports your hip bones. Now this might be where you stay for the remainder of class until I guide us out. If this is too much for your hips, or at any point you want to shift out of this, I would encourage you to come into restorative heart opener Shavasana. So all you're doing is you're keeping this blanket right underneath your spine, but your legs are going long. If none of those work and you're just ready to be plain old Shavasana with no props, I encourage you to go there. So you have Shavasana here with pillow under your, under your back. You have Baddha Konasana with pillow, and then again using those blocks if you need them. Close the eyes. If you have your oil, I encourage you to get your oil. And now we're going to do five rounds of our let go breath. So as you breathe in, remember, you want to imagine the word let. And as you breathe out, you want to imagine the word go. You're giving yourself this opportunity to let go of anything physically, mentally, or emotionally that doesn't serve you, 
floor is not yours to hold. Being open to receiving what is. Once you've completed those five let go breaths, I'll be cueing us all to come out of the practice. So inhale, let. And as always, the exhale is still doubled for go. You're still continuing your sequence, honor it. When you're ready and you finish, you'll just start to wiggle fingers and toes, rolling wrists and ankles. You'll inhale, give yourself a long stretch. And then exhale, you're gonna bring your legs in and then allow yourself to roll to one side. If you have a prop, remove it. And then everybody hug your knees in a little, just rock, give that back a little massage. And then roll to either side in fetal pose. For a moment, stay surrendered into the floor. Relish in the surrender. And then when you're ready, making sure your neck stays relaxed, bring your hands to the floor, pushing the floor away from you. Head stacks back on your shoulders. You find your way back to that Sukhasana, your easy seated pose. Eyes closed, hands back to heart center, recommitting to your intention. As you take a nice deep breath in, and exhale, head moves towards hands, allowing the mind to acknowledge the heart, the heart, the mind thanking yourself for your practice today. May you all be happy, healthy, live with ease. As always, the goodness in me honors and acknowledges the goodness in you, which is namaste. And the eyes slowly open. And I'm gonna bring my Arise blend, those blends of citruses to bring myself back. <sighs> Scissoring the ears helps. And then massaging the ears and pulling up. And then just a few taps. We are back. So again, this is much more of a yin restorative style class. I taught today with more of a focus on the floor or the seated sequence of yoga. It's a great sequence to share with anybody as it is a really easy easy sequence that can help support anyone's well-being. Any questions, you can always comment. If you want to have any requests for the rest of the week, make sure that you can put them in. Remembering if you're watching these live, um, I will be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday coming in at noon Eastern time for the live. And then we always end Fridays with that happy hour sequence at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. But never forget, on my Facebook page until the time, until I say differently, we will be having yoga, whether it's a replay or live, happening at noon Eastern and 5.30 Eastern, Monday through Friday. So I would love to have you join us. Comment and share this post. The more likes and loves and comments you give me, the more I know what you really want and I can help support my community. My main goal for these yoga sessions is to help people connect more to their bodies and access pleasurable movement. As always, I love adding oils. And if you have any question about oils, I am an oil nerd. I love them, love them, love them. I'm here to support you. Yoga kit from doTERRA is what I use for my yoga sequence. And again, align with the citruses and the peppermint and the mints. Foundationally with a little florals is great for breath work, meditation work. Anchor, which is earthy oils, is good for relaxation or a shavasana. 
And then a rise citrus oils is wonderful to come on back and feel uplifted. Have a great rest of your day. Be well. And remember, pleasurably move in the body and have a wonderful experience.